and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a new addition to my channel, it's going to be uploaded once a month and from what you can tell from the title it's all about the books I read in the month. So this is January Reads. I mentioned in like my 2018 slash 2019 video that I had a target to read 104 books this year which equals out to two books a week and I thought it would be fun to discuss what I've read with you guys and just give like kind of a little review maybe rate them out of five and just share what I've read with you guys then that way if there's a book that sounds interesting to you you can then read it and if you've got any books that you recommend for me I can then go check them out as well because I've got a lot of books to read so this month for January I've read this pile of books um, I think there is eight books here, but one of the books, the bottom one, this one, is actually technically two books in one. So I'm kind of classing it as nine books, and one of them is kind of really thin, but I had a busy week this week. So I'm going to start off with doing, well, try and do it in order that I've read. So the first ones I'm going to do to mention just the series, which is To All the Boys I Loved Before, P.S. I Still Love You, and Always and Forever, Lara Jane. And these are by Jenny Han. If you don't live under a rock and you've um, got Netflix, you'll see that to the to the, all the boys I loved before is like a really popular film on Netflix at the moment, especially with like the teenage girls and like just like women in general. It's an amazing film. I love it. I've watched it like 60 times now. I think I've watched it. I kind of like know it by heart now, which is a bit worrying. And I've watched it so much. I was like, I want to read the book, so I got the set. And I have to say, the books are amazing. I've read. I read one of these, I think it was this one, P.S. I Still Love You, I read that in a day. I could not put it down. So the very first one is about, is to all the boys I loved before, and it's about this girl, Lara Jane, who writes love letters to the boys that she has like really deep feelings for and she proper loves them. And she wrote five love letters in total. Her sister Kitty actually ends up posting these letters out to the people and loads of big drama happens and she's just embarrassed because the boy that she does love like prop thinks she loves then at the time is actually dating her or was dating her sister and uh, her other sister older one and basically peter kavinsky just comes to the rescue and basically pretends to be her boyfriend but then they start to develop feelings and it just goes from there and i it's really good and it's a bit different to the film so if you have watched the film and you enjoyed it I do recommend picking up the book because there is slight differences but it's a really good read. I give this book a 4 out of 5 rating. The next one in the series is P.S. I Still Love You. Basically at the end of the book Laura and Peter have a bit of issues and, that, and this one is all about another boy from the past, one of the boys that she wrote a letter to, comes back into her life and she starts to wonder does she have feelings for him and at the same time she's getting really jealous she's with Peter but getting really jealous over his ex and the, her, the girl that she hates, Jen and the jealousy kind of like break, breaks them up and then they get back together it's just like a general like romance really they get back together, they break up and there's just so much happens in this one book it's hard to keep track of what's going on but I really enjoyed this one and actually to be honest I found this one more enjoyable than the first one so I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5 rating and then the last one, Always and Forever, basically she's now got all the stuff of her dad want possibly getting like remarried, has he fallen in love, and then all of it's all about her going to college, what's going to happen, does she get into the college that she wants to go to, what's she going to do with her Peter go to different colleges, and it's just, again, it's so, these books are so relatable for like the teenage girls or like the teens, 20, 20s, I can't really think of an age group, it's like relatable from like 16 to probably about 25 really, some of the stuff that she goes through. But it is such a good book and then I'm not going to tell you what the ending is, but the whole time, like throughout this whole book, I was, all of the books, I was like, what's going to happen because I really want Lara Jean and Peter to get together. So there you go, this one though I want as keen on, so I am going to put it as about 3.5 out of 5, because this was wasn't the best one, I was a bit disappointed with uh, the storyline, it was very relatable, but I was a bit disappointed with it, I felt like it could have done with a bit more substance, if that makes sense, so that's that one. Then I read this book that my sister got me, this one is called Ferals, and it's all about a guy, there's a, an orphan, he's like 13 years old and he's called Kor, however he's got this ability, he's a feral, and that a feral means that they could speak to animals and he was a crow feral so he could speak to crows and it just goes from there really he has starts dreaming about his parents death and he keeps seeing a spider and it turns out the spider is actually called the spinning man and the spinning man is just like 
a crime feral like he's like a gangster feral in a way he, like he does a lot of crime and there's a big battle and yeah it sounds kind of interesting it's hard to explain really without going into too much detail especially since the only time only started to get interesting like two chapters from the end when it was like oh my god what's gonna happen like it takes this book takes ages and i mean ages to get into the story there's a lot of introducing characters and a lot of just kind of like stand not like standing around physically they're like standing around the characters but you know what i mean like they're just standing around it's just kind of like it's a slow start it kind of feels like you're in a queue waiting to go to like onto a theme park you have a waiting around and then when you get to go on the ride at the theme park you've got the adre adrenaline which is what this book is like you got the standing around and then when you get to the end you've got the adrenaline the interest it gets starts to like draw you in so unfortunately this book is only probably about a one 1.5 out of five like i I don't personally. I don't really rec um, recommend it. I've it just felt it was written well, written well in a way, but it just took too long to start. There's quite a bit of chapters that they didn't really need, or quite a bit of information they didn't need. This was actually written by Jacob Gray, and it's called Ferrell's the Crow Talker. So the next book I read was called Pirate Spirit, and if those people that have watched like my, watched my Christmas slash birthday haul. You would have seen that I got this book and the feral one for my birthday slash Christmas. This book I loved. It's all about Anne Bonny and Anne Bonny was a high, high up girl. I think my camera's flashing. I think it's running out of battery. I keep trying to see it in reflection. I can't remember what she was, was now. She was a high born child, but she was a illegitimate. She her parents weren't married. Her mum was like the housekeeper, and she they end up going off to like America, and she marries someone called. James Bonnie and they decide they want to be pirates but he then has loads of issues and like it turns out he doesn't actually can't he isn't, isn't made up to be a pirate and he doesn't become one and then she falls for Jack who's a pirate I've forgotten his last name what was his name Jack Rackman and he was like a proper like his like dream pirate is like the Jack Sparrow kind of handsome man I imagine he'd be I kind of pictured him as Jack Sparrow in a way that's like who I used to help me picture this character Jack Rackman and she falls for him and he falls for her he, she runs off with him and pretends to be a man on his pirate ship the, the Bonnie and they travel around the seas and then there's another pirate that comes into it and it turns out this other pirate turns out to be a girl as well so these two girls help together they fall pre both of them end up falling pregnant and then just loads of stuff happens um, what else happens the other female's called Mary and she marries like one of the guys that are captured and then near the end, they get they all get captured, and the pirates, the male pirates, all get hung. And she, her, and Mary are meant to get hung once they've had their babies. And Mary, however, gets ill while she's in the prison because the prison is absolutely disgusting, and she ends up dying. And like obviously, the baby dies as well. Um, and gives birth to her baby, but then turns up J James Bonney, her original husband, her, appears and he's like now really high up in the navy and everything and he actually rescues her and then it ends with her thinking like so asking with her child her and jack's child just got her little baby she's alive she's with, going back to ireland where she was from with james and her father and jane she asked james do you think is there like do you think you could have like second chances do they exist can we have second chances love and you can clearly tell that he still loves her and she's now like loving him again and it ends with them heading back to ireland this was cut, it says on the back that it's actually based on like a true story, where is it? Um, this is a, ta yeah, this is a tale of Anne Bonny, but unlikely pirate who disguised herself as a man. Um, it's inspired by actual historical accounts, so it's got a mixture of historical and a bit of mixture of, so it's a mixture of fiction and a mixture, mixture of the other one. My brain's gone dead. I really enjoyed this book though, the only thing is the font is really small. This is by Jeffrey S. S. Williams and it's actually called, it's called The Adventures of Anne Bonny Pirate Spirit. But I seriously enjoyed this book. Like, I think I'd probably rate it... I wouldn't give it a 5, but I think I'd probably give it a 4. Because it was a good book, I do recommend this. If you like pirates and everything, you like histor historical fiction, this is an enjoyable book to read. Then the next book I read is... Fantastic Beasts by J.K. Rowling, the original screenplay, so it's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I hadn't read this yet, I don't know why, it's been on my bookcase for like ages and I never got around to reading it. Um, obviously everyone knows, hopefully everyone knows Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. You've got Newt, Newt who goes off to New York 
and he's got his briefcase with all the beasts inside him, they escape, he meets Jacob and he meets all the other characters and it's just loads happens and seriously if you don't know about Fantastic Beasts and Most Fun and you surely, surely must be living under a rock or something because when the movie came out it was a huge huge deal and it was everywhere, literally everywhere and the new one only, well not recently came out but it came out at the end of last year so again it's all everyone has been talking about and all you've been able to see it was on like on the radio like every day so did i enjoy this yes i enjoyed it i do like reading like i love anything harry potter fantastic beasts related the only thing is my personal thing is i'm not very keen on reading screenplays because obviously it's literally written like tina sets the case flat on the floor so it's got like directions as well so and so stands here so and so does this it's like the actions are like described and then they have a speaking I personally don't get along with reading screenplays, I find them a little bit boring, so personally for me I I enjoyed the book but I did get bored because of the fact that I just don't like this style of writing these style of books. So for that reason it is only getting a 3.5 but I would personally I want to say it's like a 5 because it's Harry Potter world, Fantastic Beasts world. but. I'm going to say because of the fact that I don't get along with these style books, I am giving it a lower rating. So that's that book. Then the next one which is the two in one book, so it's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. So obviously Alice in Wonderland, hopefully you will know the story, young girl falls down the rabbit hole and loads of stuff happens. The book though, the story is a lot different to the films, like super different to the films. So she meets the white rabbit, she meets the duchess and there's like loads of stuff with pepper and soup and sneezing. The duchess has a baby which turns into a pig, she meets, the, I just spat everywhere. She meets the Cheshire cat, she then meets Tweedledee and Tweedledum, she meets Humpty Dumpty, she meets the Queen of Hearts and sees in paint and the roses red and it's just loads of stuff, it's very, it is a very different story to what the kids see in the Disney movies. It is very different. There's a little bit of the same in the Disney movies. However, the story is a lot more different and there's a lot more poetical. There's a lot of poets. Poem, poets? There's a lot of poems in the book. But it is a good, enjoyable book. So overall, I think I would rate this one, again, again we're gonna say about three out of five. And then the other one, is Through the Looking Glass, again, it's got a lot of poems in it. And it's all based around the game chess. Alice falls asleep and goes through the looking glass and she imagines, she meets characters in that whilst they're playing a game of chess, she has to move across the pieces to become the queen. And I think this is that, that's actually the one where she meets Humpty Dumpty, which is through the looking glass. It's, and the Tweedledee and Tweedledum is in the, fir, the chess piece one instead of the first one. I'm getting really confused which was. I literally read them one after another and I can't remember which way it was, who she met in which one but she goes through and has to do loads of stuff she meets the knight who like every time the horse moves he falls off either left or right or forward and he lands on his head she meets the white queen who um keeps losing her scarf and can't really dress herself she meets the flowers see in the flowers in the film you meet in the first film but in this book you don't meet the talk of flowers until you get to through the looking glass so basically the disney films use aspects of both the books to create the movie and something's echoing i think my ear popped and now it sounds really weird so again through the looking glass i think i will probably rate it about three i enjoyed it but it's so the poems and that's just a bit too much like let me try and find a page for you that you have to like read um and here you go this is literally one poem um it's called this so it's the walrus and the carpenter and it starts like here and it goes down over all of those two pages it's a three page long poem and I like the aspect of having the poems and that but it's just when you're reading them at night and that's just a little bit long and I don't know I, I didn't really need them so let's go now the last one I've read is kind of a cheat book but I'm classing it as a book because it is a book it's writing it's in a book so this is one of the ones that my mum got me again she got me a set of Shakespeare stories for kids and I thought I'd read Hamlet because I really enjoy Hamlet and actually I know I read it in one day, but this is a really good, these are really good, I'm excited to read the other ones. So it's just general, like very small, general, it's like generalising, generalising that right word, I don't think it's the right word on my mouth. So you've got drawings and that, and you're just basically you're summarising, that's what I was trying to think of. You basically, sum, it's basically a summarise of the actual play Hamlet, and it's a good, I think these are really good actually. I really enjoy reading it, especially because I've had a really busy week this week, 
and I haven't had time to sit down and read an actual book but I wanted to still read something and this was a good little pick me up book and I love Hamlet and I actually love how they've done it to try and tell the story to kids like this if you have got children and you want to introduce them to Shakespeare these books are really good I cut I've just got a Shakespeare story, Hamlet, by Andrew Matthews and Tony Ross. I don't know if they're all by them, they're all by different people, I think. Possibly. No, they're all by Andrew Matthews and Tony um, Ross. I don't know, though. I can't remember what the set of the books were called. I think it was just um, Oxford's Ox Orchid Classic Shakespeare Stories. And they just retold stories of the plays for kids. And I have to say, it was really good, I really enjoyed it. It covers everything that happens in the play in such small amount of pages. It gives the kitchen, it would give a child the basics of Hamlet, basically. So, that, just because of the fact I think it's really good for kids, and now I am giving this a 4.5, not, like, because if I was a kid reading this, I think I would really enjoy it, and I think this would be a good thing to sit down and read with your children to introduce them. I think it's a good idea. So, 4.5. So there we have it. There are, there are, that is all the books that I have read for January. Is there any of those that you're going to read? Do you think you will pick one of them up? I have a very like mixed like taste when it comes to reading. I will literally read anything, like, anything. And even when I pick up a book and I start reading it and I don't enjoy it, I have to finish it. I'm one of those people that can't just finish a book halfway if I don't enjoy it. I still have to finish it. So I will literally read anything. If there's a book that you would like me to read, or you've got a recommendation, like there's a book that you absolutely love and you think I'd enjoy it, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely check it out and add it to the list of books to read. Because I haven't got many left on my shelf. I have a shelf just to the left of me for books to read and I think I've only got about 15 books left. So that's only like two months worth of books. So I do need to find some more books to read. But there you go. Hopefully I didn't talk too long. I know I talked quite quickly, but I'm trying to make it so this video isn't super, super long, but I wanted to cover as much as I could. Um, I am hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, this is only going to be up once a month, so this was January reads, and then at the end of February, we'll get February reads, and I'll just keep going throughout the year to cover the books I've read. And if I read more than, like, eight books, eight, nine, between eight and ten bits, if I end up reading more than ten books in that month, <coughs> excuse me, oh, I'm getting thirsty. If I read more than ten books at the end of that month, I won't, I probably won't mention them all, and I'll just do my favourites or something, because I don't want to make this video too long. That I really do think is everything. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Like I said, comment below the books that you recommend or if you're going to read any of those books or just talk about books in general. I love, love books. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put up gaming videos every Wednesday and for a little while they are going to be on Fridays as well just to get boost for Spyro because at the moment it's just Spyro on my channel and I want to try and get the Spyro game finished. And then Sundays are just general videos. I think next week you're going to be getting one about a haul. You're going to get like a shopping haul one. And then you've got a tattoo one to come in the future. So my videos are very random on Sundays. So that's everything. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening. Whatever time does. I hope you have been smiling because that's the most important thing. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.